Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, we were still traveling, so we had dinner out. We were starving, we hadn't eaten all day, and this was delicious. We started out with some bruschetta. It had goat cheese, prosciutto, arugula, and a balsamic reduction. For the entree, my husband got a pizza. I can't remember what it was called, but it had like prosciutto, arugula, um, Parmesan cheese. It was really good. And then I had their smoked Gouda carbonara. It was delicious, and that was our dinner this night. For dinner the next night, we were finally back home and after almost a week of eating out and traveling, I wanted something comforting and we also hadn't been to the grocery store, so I wanted to use things that I had on hand. I decided to make salmon patties. I've shared how I make these before on my channel, but they are so simple and I make them the way that my granny made them. So to this bowl, I have a can of salmon. I just drained it and then I picked out the large bones. I'm going to add an egg to that. And then my grandmother always used cornmeal, so I like to add a little bit of cornmeal and a little bit of flour. To season these up, normally I just use a little salt and pepper, but I decided to use some of this Antinono seafood seasoning. It was really good. So I'm just going to mix all of that until it's combined really well, and then I'll form the mixture into patties and get them fried up. For one of the sides, I am just warming up some fried apples. I got this can of fried apples from Aldi and it's been in my pantry for a while. I added it to this small saucepan with a little tiny pat of butter, a little sprinkling of brown sugar, and some cinnamon. And I'm just going to heat that on low until they're warm. I had just a couple slices of bacon that really needed to be used up, so I decided to make Mandy and the Makings Green Beans. I've mentioned this many, many times before my channel. I'll have her recipe linked in the description box below. And to go along with that, I'm just making some box macaroni and cheese. We like the cauliflower from Kraft, so I'm going to cook that up according to the package instructions. I've got some oil in a skillet that I brought up to temperature over about medium heat. I added my salmon patties and I like to cook them for about five minutes or so per side until they're golden brown and cooked all the way through. Once they're done, I like to remove them to a paper towel lined plate. Here are the finished salmon patties. We've got the green beans, the fried apples, and the macaroni and cheese. And I know I mentioned this before, but anytime I make box macaroni and cheese, I like to put in like a slice of American cheese. It just makes it a little cheesier and extra creamy. All right, here's a picture of our plates. I like um, ketchup with my salmon patties. This was so comforting. It really hit the spot. Again, like I said earlier, salmon patties are so simple, but they're delicious. For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for herbed chicken sliders. This recipe came out of this Better Homes and Gardens magazine. This is the January, February um, 2022 edition. My dad gets lots of magazines, and after he reads through them, he'll bring them over to my husband and I and always thumb through them. And this just looked so delicious and super easy, and it was. So let me show you how I made these. I will try to find this recipe um, if it's linked online and put it down in the description box below for you. I'm going to start by making the patty mixture. To this bowl, I'm adding some ground chicken. And then the recipe called for, I believe, fresh basil and fresh parsley, but I didn't want to buy fresh basil and fresh parsley just for this recipe. It wasn't enough to substantiate buying it for me, so I just used dry. It still turned out delicious. Next, I'm going to add some grated Parmesan cheese, then some salt and pepper. I'm going to add some minced fresh garlic. Next, I'm going to combine the mixture really well. Handling raw meat doesn't bother me. I just make sure to wash my hands really well. If it bothers you, you can use gloves or you could use a spoon or spatula. So once it's combined really well, I'm going to just eyeball the mixture into about as equal amounts as I can get it and then form my patties. Now, I did make these a little large because the ciabatta rolls were large. And a quick note, the recipe called for a pound and a half of ground chicken or you could also use turkey, but I just used a pound uh, just for my husband and I. 
Here are those ciabatta rolls. I got these at Walmart. I was going to butter these and toast them, but then I remembered that I had this Chef Chamois garlic butter on hand, so I decided to use that instead of regular butter. So I just melted some of that up, brushed it on the ciabatta rolls, and I'm going to toast these over about medium heat. Here are those toasted ciabatta rolls. That Chef Chamois butter on these were so, so good. All right, I'm gonna cook up my chicken patties now. I've got my skillet over about medium heat. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil and then add the chicken patties to my skillet. I cooked these for about five to six minutes per side. You just wanna make sure you cook them until they're at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Once the chicken's done, we're going to add our sauce. The recipe calls for marinara sauce, but I had this jar of pizza sauce in my fridge that needed to be used up. So I added it to the small sauce pan and just warmed it up on about low heat while the chicken cooked. So I'm adding some of that sauce to the chicken patties. I'm going to add a sprinkle of Parmesan cheese, a couple slices of provolone cheese, and then I'm just going to allow this to cook for just about a minute or two until that cheese melts. Here's a picture of our plates. I added the chicken patties to our toasted buns, and then I made some quick side salads using things that I needed to use up. So we've got some spring mix, goat cheese crumbles, some dried cranberries, roasted pecans, and then some balsamic vinaigrette. This was delicious. It was so good. It was so fresh tasting, but those chicken patties and with the sauce, they had so much flavor. I'll definitely be making this again, and I recommend you all give this a try. For dinner the next night, I did not feel like cooking, so I just kept it simple, made some hot dogs. I cooked these in the air fryer at 390 degrees for about five to seven minutes, and then that was it. To go along with that, I again made some box macaroni and cheese. I know I just made this the other night, but hey, it was a quick and easy side dish. Again, I used some of the Kraft cauliflower mac and cheese, just added a slice of American cheese at the end, and that was it. Here's a picture of our plate. So we just have some of the mac and cheese, the hot dogs. I like ketchup and a little mustard on my hot dog. My husband likes ketchup, mustard, and relish. And that was our dinner this night. Nothing fancy, but hey, it was better than nothing. And we got fed, so that's all that matters. For dinner the next night, we had a sheet pan ham dinner. I shared how I made this on a video that went up this past Friday, so I'll link that in the description box below. I highly recommend you all give this a try. This was super quick and easy, and it was delicious. So, so good. I love ham and a good cheesy side dish. So here's a picture of our plates. We have some ham slices and pineapple, roasted asparagus, some rolls, and some loaded baked potatoes. And like I said, this was so, so good. For dinner the next night, we ordered Papa John's. We had a coupon for a free large pizza and we decided to use it. We just got a pepperoni pizza. I forgot to take a picture of the whole pizza, but this is a picture of my plate and that was dinner this night. For the last dinner in this week's video, I tried a new recipe for queso smothered chicken. This came from the plain chicken. Now I've had this pen for a while and kept meaning to make it and just hadn't. It is pretty similar to her Pollo Loco recipe, and I've mentioned that and shared it before on my channel, and we love that recipe. I thought that we would like this one because it's pretty similar, and I was right. This was delicious. I'll definitely be making this again, and I recommend you all give it a try. All right, to get started, I'm going to marinate my chicken. The recipe calls for this Baja Chipotle marinade. This can be a little hard to find. I find it at Publix. Uh, she lists a different marinade that you can use in her recipe, or to be quite honest, you could just season up your chicken really well. So I added the chicken breasts. I cut them in half horizontally to make like cutlets and some of that marinade to a Ziploc bag. I like to marinate this overnight. You can do it in as little as 30 minutes. Now we're gonna get started on the orzo part. This worked out perfectly because I had a half a box of orzo in my pantry that needed to be used up. To this pot, I'm gonna add some oil. It's over about medium heat, and I'm going to toast up the orzo. You just wanna cook this until the orzo starts to get a little brown. Next, we're going to add the seasonings. Now, the recipe called for a Southwest seasoning or chili powder. I had some of this Mrs. Dash Southwest Chipotle, so I did a combination of that along with some taco seasoning. And because I used the Mrs. Dash, which is salt-free, I added just a little bit of salt. Next, I'm going to add in the tomato paste. Give that a stir, and I cooked that for just about 30 seconds or a minute. Next, I'm going to add in the chicken broth. I'm using some water and some of this chicken broth base. I'm going to give that a stir and then bring this to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, 
cover it with a lid and cook it for about 15 to 20 minutes or so until the orzo is done to your liking. Next, I'm going to make the queso parts, basically just rotel dip. In this small saucepan, I've added some cubed Velveeta cheese. I'm adding a can of rotel that is not drained. I've got this on about low heat, and I'm just going to uh, cook this until it's melted, stirring it occasionally. The recipe calls for you to do this in the microwave. You can do it either way. They're both easy. All right, so now it's time to grill the chicken. I cook this outside on my grill. You could do this in a skillet over top of the stove. You could cook it on an indoor grill, however you want. Just make sure you cook it until it's at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Once the orzo is done, I just fluffed it with a fork. Here's the finished orzo. This is the queso, and then we've got the grilled chicken. To go along with this, I made some broccoli, just did a semen bag, cooked it in the microwave according to the package instructions, added a tiny pat of butter, salt and pepper, and that was it for the broccoli. Here are the plates. To serve this up, I laid down a bed of orzo, added a piece of the chicken, added some of the queso over the orzo and chicken. You don't have to do this, but I added just a little bit of cilantro leaves to garnish. And then we've got the broccoli. Like I said, this was so good. It was yummy. The chicken was so flavorful. The orzo was delicious. It was just a great combination. So I recommend you all give this a try. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.